Some proponents of New Age thinking suggest that we should all be living in the present moment, that the past is just our imagination and the future is yet to be written. Similarly, some interpretations of quantum physics suggest that our reality is a process of conscious observation, and that the present doesn't collapse to a single reality until it gets measured. Both of these ideas talk about now as some precise instant in time, and that would be the only time that actually exists. And I don't really agree with that idea. It seems to me that our conscious awareness exists over a small but finite duration of time, because if we truly lived in the now, there would be no music. <laughs>
swamps the sound of the click and you can't hear it at all anymore. As soon as you play a little bit early or late, then you start to hear two sounds again. And there might be times where you might want to deliberately play off the beat. So if you play a little bit ahead or a little bit behind, you can make your notes sound more pushed or energetic or more relaxed. But pushed or relaxed compared to what? I mean, no one listening has a click track going on inside their heads. But what they might have is a feel for where they're expecting that note to be based on the other music that they're listening to. So if you have two musicians playing and their notes are slightly out from each other, is this one on the beat and this one ahead, or is this one on the beat and this one behind? The answer to that for the listener might be quite subjective, but typically what happens is the one that is playing more rhythmically or more notes is the one that sets the groove, and then the other one is being referenced against that. In the case where one is playing a percussion instrument, like drums, then yeah, they're probably the one that's setting the groove. But if there were, say, two mandolins, then the roles might change halfway through the piece, which means to keep the same feel of the music, you also have to swap whether you're playing ahead or behind at that time. In some genres like jazz and Indian classical music, sometimes the percussionist is the one that's playing around the beat while it's a different instrument that's actually holding down the groove. Using brushes instead of sticks on a drum, for example, will smear out where the exact beats are while still maintaining a rhythm, which gives others more of an open playing field of where they're going to place their notes. And while we're talking about drums, each of the different parts of a drum kit will have their own time that it takes for a sound to be heard. And so if you build up a rhythm using, say, a kick, a snare and hi-hats, you can shift around where the relative positions of all of these notes are to get vastly different feels. Once you add more musicians into the equation, it's a constant balancing act of push and pull, with each musician feeling the pulse in a slightly different spot and listening and reacting and responding to each other. It's not that we're analytically thinking about it, but through listening to the music that's being made collectively, you subconsciously end up adjusting your own playing, at least in an ideal world. This is a lot easier to do in practice if you play with those same people a lot. If you find yourself playing with someone who you've not played with before, there's normally a case of trying to work out where the pocket is for a while before it settles in. Okay, so now armed with our instinctive knowledge of how long our instrument takes to sound and where the pulse is and we know where we want to play in relation to that pulse, now we can all play in time, right? Well, no, there are other things we have to consider too, and one is that sound takes time to travel. So if we're on a stage that's 10 meters across, sound's gonna take 30 milliseconds to get across from one side of the stage to the other. So if I'm playing in time with someone on the other side of the stage, they're going to hear me 60 milliseconds behind. And that may not sound like much, but this is what that sounds like. And if you're in the audience, 100 metres back from the stage, happily clapping along in time with the music, the band is hearing your claps over half a second late, which is why they're trying their best to ignore you. And then there's the fact that our brain isn't a computer, and we don't have a crystal oscillator running inside our heads at a fixed rate. Our timekeeping mechanism is a vaguely understood chemical process that speeds up and slows down in response to changes in hormone levels and metabolism. And so if we get nervous or excited, then we perceive time as passing more slowly, which means our prediction of when the next note is going to be will be out by quite a lot, even if it still feels right to us. We may not even notice that we're playing too fast unless we record it and listen back later. So we as musicians are making sounds that approximate pitches and we're playing them at approximate times and we have everything from physics through to our conscious awareness sabotaging our efforts at perfection and what results is a wonderfully messy, intricate, nuanced and human endeavour that we call music. 
And that's all for now. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. I make videos regularly and YouTube thinks you might like this one in particular. A big thanks to my supporters over on Patreon. If you would like to join them or make a one-off donation, the links are in the description. And to all of you, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.